Welcome back to the greatest Persona chat. We are truly Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Yep, we'll continue on the story mode from the Farina version to get through where we left off. We might take our bed too, but I'll try to make it as quick as possible with you, nah, nah, Tommy's story. Let's go where we left off, shall we? After the battle. The winner is you, Senpai! <laughs> what an utter thrashing! Oh, that is quite. <laughs> I love all this animosity! These happy, self-righteous friends showing how they really feel by beating the crap out of each other. That's not fun at all. That's the real thrill of a P1 Grand Prix! I like this. I don't care to hear, I don't care to hear any more of Kay's stuff. I still have to res res reservations about fighting against my friends, but I know and now I know that there, there, that there is no other way to say I will do what I must do to I also there is no knowing if Teddy and Rita have been lifted just like Yoshi and Rita had. If they are, then there is no use in trying to talk to them through the monitor like this. That's the conclusion I come to, but Miss President seems to have other ideas. How much further are you going to push this? What are you doing it anyway? These guys are friends! What's so much fun about making friends fight each other? Wow. The president said her frustration that Kay's image on the monitor. But I was a bit surprised at how she was worded. I was more upset that she was making friends but fight each other. Not why she had dragged the entire show into this. It only just met her. Compassion would be a great student council president. It's no wonder if he was elected to represent the fitting body of Yasuo Gotham High. It's alright. Thanks, though. It's not alright! This is. Sorry, but you're not getting your wish. What? Did you think this would be all it took to break us apart? That it would make us hate each other? Sorry to say, but that's a huge mistake on your part. Ow. I believe in my friends. They'll never get taken in like that. <laughs> you're so stupid! What kind of sensei are you? I'm warning you now. If you really are Teddy, then we'll get you back to normal no matter what it takes. Even if it costs us our lives. But if you're an imposter hiding behind Teddy's face, I will make you pay for toying with us. <laughs> Without any sign of remorse, that's not like Teddy at all. No, he's most likely not the real Teddy. Do you think? Seeing the anger in his face only raises my suspicion. Oh yeah, they need to read it, not her stuff either. Someone must be taking Teddy Um, that girl's come around. I knew you were going to be so sad. Are you alright? Yukiko, are you alright? I'm sorry I couldn't go easy on you. No, it's okay. You aren't your usual self, but I could tell by your eyes that there was something going on. I'm sorry too. Did I hurt you? Kinda, yeah. I sure wouldn't want to get into it with you again. <laughs> I tried to pass it off as a joke, and it looked like it's Hey, did I say things that offended you earlier? Yes, you did. What in the world did I say to her? I bet it was for something horrible. Whoever's doing this is certainly finding the most annoying way of getting us to fight. But what I suppose we said to her doesn't matter. Yukiko is still hesitant to bring it up, so I told her not to worry about it. I don't need to know what I said. 
I just wanted to see if my guess was right. It looks like our enemy has the power to confuse our senses. My first opponent was Yosuke, and he told me a similar story after we fought. Huh? You said something bad to Yosuke-kun too? What did you tell him? You sure you want to know? <laughs> if I'm the only one admitting to what happened, that's not fair, is it? But that curiosity is in line with the Yukiko I know. I invaded the issue with a smile and call out to Miss President, who's standing behind me. What kind of people are you? Hmm? Oh, right. We used our personas. Yeah, we should at least explain to her what's going on. That's it in a nutshell. So, that's what you meant by falling into a TV. Yeah, which makes me believe this school could be a part of your mind that's materialized. This school came from me? That's a lot to swallow. I'm not surprised. Why is it different this time around, though? Usually the victim's shadow appears first. Yeah. Right. I had doubt about that, too. There's a reason why it's dangerous for people who can't use their personas to enter this world. Besides the obvious reason, such as not being able to escape and being unable to protect himself from shadows, the person shadows separate from them. The shadows that split off a strongly attached to original people they came from and will try to harm them or to become independent, independent identities. I haven't, haven't given it much thought. This is present seems so energetic, but it's still possible, possible that this has happened to her as well. I put this together with the conversation I had with Teddy a moment ago and come to a conclusion. Teddy who's hosting this tournament? What if he's actually this girl's shadow? Huh? I noticed he got agitated when I called him an imposter. A fake Teddy would mean he's someone else using Teddy's form. I see. This reflects Miss President's heart. Her shadow must be here. And right now, the strongest candidate is. That's right. If we both saw an illusion, then at the very least, the enemy has the power to lose our senses and make us see that and hear things that aren't there. On top of that, it can't alert the others hear what us say and see a fear. If it can do that, then I can see that our enemy can use that power to change his appearance. That means it could be impersonating Teddy and Yuki in this tournament. That still leaves the question as to why it would take the on the appearance of someone it doesn't know. I know mean, I've seen the shadows in the past that looked and on bizarre took on bizarre appearances, but this is the first time I've seen one impersonating an ex existing person. Does this shadow have some kind of objection? When I come to my senses, I see that this person has turned tail and is staring down at the ground. As this talk of shadow, another world doesn't seem to be reaching her, but she seems troubled at the thought that she might be causing all this trouble. I'm about to tell her that the actions of a shadow aren't her fault. Mr. President, raise, 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 raise. I'm going to check out the announcement room. Hmm? That General Teddy's behind the whole shebang, right? And if he came from me, then I got 
gotta own up to the responsibility. A student body president, I can't let this go. W uh, wait, you're being reckless. We'll take care of the shadow. You need to... What? Get out of this TV world? And how am I supposed to do that? Go on, show me the door. Well... Her eyes are so as the inspiring relationship as it has been when I first met her. The sense of responsibility and her awareness of her duty say that she will never... Back. Your little cousin's in the announcement room. And you're gonna go save her, right? I might not be as strong as the two of you, but I'm no slouch in a fight. Wouldn't it be better if we went together? No, don't you understand? This world is... I know it's dangerous, but there's gotta be something only I can do to help. Hell, that aside, I can't leave after causing so much trouble. Making friends fight each other. I'm going on ahead. You don't want to waste time arguing, yeah? This president declares this is a voice that broke no argument and takes it off from. I wasn't expecting her to behave rashly like this. I remember how fast she can run. If I'm going to go after her, I need to go at once. Please, you have to go after her. You can go see you hesitate and know exactly what to say. She's right. There's not so much that we don't understand, but there's no way that the investigation team can't let the victim run off to die. You can go ignore the fact that she I've been leaving her here alone and helped me to follow a girl she only just met. This is this is the exact opposite of the behavior she's been displaying before the fight. Now that is the youth coat. Ah, uh, my God, you know. I am ashamed that I had even slightly let myself be confused by the way I heard her speak before I answered her. Mm -hmm. I believe you. back to you, for no matter what. You can go not me. I turn to begin running as fast as I can. I have to rely on the state echoes of footsteps ahead to pursue this present through school. I can't use my my memories of the school in order to na navigate because the invisible walls are everywhere. But the announcement room is up there. That obvious limit obviously limits the path that I can see to the day. I will catch up up with her no matter what. Make up the right choice since I did give you fun. <clears throat> I've been running after this present for a while, but I still can't catch, catch sight of her. She's so fast, it's almost supernatural. I even begin to think that her path is may not be changed by the invisible wall. Wait a second. Now that I think about it, she's not a participant in the Q1 Grand Prix. Right. She didn't appear in the instruction video. And even though she she wasn't affected by the rules. Because she is able to walk through the walk itself, and catching up to her will be quite difficult. Just as I was thinking this, suddenly a blue door appears in my path yet again. Yep, velvet room. I've seen this before. This is the entrance to the velvet room. I don't have time to deal with this, or so I think. But when I concern the timing of this appearance, I can't help but feel that there must be a reason for it. I make, I make up my mind and reach the door, for the door. As I walk through the door, I feel a slight sense of lightness, denseness, and I close my eyes for a second. How did I get here? When I open my eyes, I see it in my usual spot position. And Margaret is smiling quietly at me, as if nothing is different. When she sees that I notice her, she speaks as a, if aware of my my <laughs> you seem flustered, but time has no meaning here. Margaret politely points this out, knowing that I'm in a hurry. Time is meaningless, huh? I thought I figured out a few things about this room, about, but it seems that there's still more for me to learn about it. If time doesn't pass while I'm in this room, then I should have considered on um, what she's about, she's about to tell me. Once again, as if reading my thoughts, Marvin. It seems you've emerged victorious and have come away with a piece of the truth. Though you are in a garden of deceit, you have the vision to go forward. Very impressive. 
Is that student council president's shadow really the cause of all this then? Who can say? All I know is that you are getting ever closer to the truth. There is one thing I can tell you. Margaret's golden eyes are fixed on If that girl's shadow is the cause of this misfortune, she will face her trial. But it's separate from your fate. You have your own trial to overcome. Keep that to heart. My own trial? I don't mean to, but I repeated what Margaret just has just said. Everyone sees various things in you that draw them to you. Salvation. Hope. I myself find fascination in watching over you. Fate may not be the author of your trials, but you are destined to be tested. <laughs> Margaret smiles maliciously and nods back towards me. Ah, I'm leaving again. Another slight feeling and lightness that the list passes, and I return to the off otherworldly school. The blue door is nowhere to be found as if it had never been there to begin with. I looked up. I still doubt, I don't understand what my own trial is supposed to be, but for some reason, my mind has cleared up a bit. I guess, don't forget the sign. In, in any case, I need to see Kate Nath in the present. And now I immediately see an unrecognizable feature. A long time there. I found her. Wait! It's too dangerous to go alone. The president turns around in response to my voice. He smiles. How did I think that? Tell me impressed that you managed to catch up to me so quick. Promise me that you won't leave my side, and you can't do anything rash. If you can't agree to those terms, I'll have to force you into protective custody. This is a matter of life and death for you. Sure thing. Then let's get to that announcement room together. Atta girl. I thought that I'd be able to keep her in check by saying that her life was in danger, but she didn't Hey, mind if I ask you something? What is it? There's a moment of silence. Just as I'm about to ask to ask her to go on, the present. It's tough being forced to fight your friends, huh? <sighs> uh, oh, sorry. You don't gotta answer. about any of this, but it's a question that must be answered. That's how it feels No, you're right. If I could avoid it, I would. But I believe in my friends. You mean your friends won't hate you after the fight? Or you think they'll understand that you don't really want to fight? I don't know. Both, maybe. I mean, there's no way we'd fight each other without some kind of reason. What if you had to kill each other? Ah, kill each other? I truly hadn't anticipated that question. I'm caught off guard by how I hadn't even to consider it. It's true. There's no guarantee that this is General Teddy wouldn't won't suddenly decide to make us fight to the death on a whim. Huh. Sorry, that was probably over the line. I don't know why I said that. I wouldn't let it happen. Okay. Concern. Even if I was forced into such a situation, I would never follow that order. That's all I can say right now. But after hearing my answer, the president passes her eyes down again. After seeing that behavior, I, I how do I put this? Why could that be? Something doesn't feel like her. Could this president be carrying some unimaginable burden that he has? Yet to confine us? Is it so heavy that she would ask that question of me? Speaking 
Speaking of which, if General Tay does turn out to be her shadow, what does that mean about whatever the press group plot she truly has? Suddenly, it seems that her courageous and cheerful Demeter are all a mirror image of that, and a slight sense of fear fills my spine. My thoughts race through my head while we walk down the hall. What? What are you doing? Yeah, I probably broke my nose for that moment. It's that invisible wall again. Even though I should have been expecting them, I relax my guard and walk right into one. I hold my nose a way, a, a way away from the present. So it looks concerned. <sighs> There's an invisible wall. I don't think I can go through here. An invisible wall? Oh. That must have been why you broke out of the mime act every now and then. Well, if I can pass through, it must only be blocking the tournament fighters. This world sure is out there. That makes sense. This peasant walks right through the place at Bundit Chip. So that must be the case. As I imagine, this peasant is unexpected by these walls. Is it because she's not one of the fighters in the Grand Prix? Of course, if General Terry really is her staff, maybe the normal rules don't apply to her. The entrance of the school building is ahead of us. But perhaps worst of all is that the walls I had just walked into is blocking me from reaching there. I just have to find some other way. No, there are, there are walls there too. And the same can be said for the direction towards the entrance. As I thought, as thought a thought crossed my mind, as I checked back in the way we came and had come. It as I thought. Another invisible wall has formed where I had just passed and can't go back. With walls in every direction there, no there's nowhere I can go. I'm trapped. And if I can't go anywhere, this can't only mean one thing. Be careful. This probably means. Another fight. The moment I called out to Miss President, General Teddy appears on the monitor in the entryway. It means that my third round in the P1 Grand Prix is about to begin. Gee, <laughs> I have a feeling about that. <laughs> Is your snout okay, Sensei? Jeez, you're such a glut. You're still using that form? It's getting old. Why don't you just show your true self? Boy, oh, you've gotten peevish. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. I was in the instance of trying to dial up him up, but he wasn't falling for it. It looks like I'm not going to get into the real answer that way. This is the Okay, so who's my next opponent? Woo! Now you're getting into the spirit of things. Let me guess. You're starting to enjoy beating up your friends? Yippee! Okay! With the next challenger, come on down! Here we go. We need to for now. The general doesn't speak, pick up on my attention, and loudly yells out at what what what, what appears to be his pre-battle's catchphrase. Smoke pours out. And who should appear from the smoke but the person I was expecting to see. Four of us entered the TV together. I've already fought against Yosuke and Yukiko. Den? Yep. That's what I thought. You're the last of us, after all. <laughs> yeah. I had a feeling you'd be next, too. For the moment, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with her words and actions, but I can't let my guard down. Well, I felt the same way when I encountered you because here, but as they say, in third time to charm, I have to see if she hates me in her right mind. Well, I'll see shadow. I decided that the best way to do it, that is to calm and start a conversation. Chie, you know what they're doing, right? Before I can begin to explain to you, Yeah, I know. The stuff we say gets twisted around so we end up fighting each other, right? Don't worry. You're the son of a bitch who left us as soon as the last case ended, but you're still our good friend. I mean, you have it easy. You're just fighting your friends. I had to keep killing them. 
over and over, all because of you humans! More stuff about killing, huh? This president was talking about it earlier, too. This must be. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. I'll give you a taste of the pain they put me through! You're not even trying to sound like me anymore. I can't even begin to understand what he's talking about. But if a shadow is intentionally making me say anything, what does this mean about this president? Killing each other? All because of you? What kind of stupid is wrong? Because he's doing half of the president of Yasuko and Johnny Hyde being happy. No, now's not the time to get for this. I'll have to look into the after, just after we clear up all the confusion between us. Let's do this, Chen. I ignore her words and draw my sword. Immediately, we say voice echoes through the air. Area as if he was waiting for us. Well, well, round three of the P1 Grand Prix already. Word on the street is that the carnivore may have a slight advantage. Hmm. Will you, Senpai, all talk and no skill, manage to eke out a win this time? Uh. Let's get this show on the road. Ready? Not really. You versus T.A. Here we go! Is that Persona? Sorry, I'm not good. So, T.A. Okay. I think it's time to get the controls right. Sorry if I keep screwing up. Relieve me, I'm trying to learn. <laughs> it's been a while. What do you expect, huh? Finally! Teddy, Neat, and Rise, and Nanako are. What about the others? Where's Kanji? I won. I lower my sword and begin slowly throwing my breath. Please. I don't mean I think it's too bad. Considering this way, this was my first time having to do this. I feel like I'm getting too good at not having to do this. Wipe that smug look off your face. This isn't fun at all! Uh, General Teddy has seen that the fight ended without any injuries. This has worked through the monitor. <laughs> the image of the monitor then disappears without anything further. Let him say whatever he wants. I fought all my friends I came into the TV with, and none of them are hurt. All that's left is to head to the announcement room and make sure Nanako is safe, and then we'll be able to go home. I walk over to Chie and help her up, up off the ground. She's come back to the senses and she seems like a little sleepy. Uh, are you are you all right? <laughs> I think so. Good. 
good. Man, you're strong. I'm kind of shocked at how much of a difference there is between us. I never been kicked around so badly in my life. I waited, I waited for T.A. to reach her feet and then tell her everything that's been happening up to this point. So the others are safe too? Yeah. <sighs> what a relief. I was pretty worried. I think it was a relief that you sit down on the floor once more. I can't help but come up still at the reaction. She really does care about her friends. Uh, yeah, these are the people I believe in. Seeing that us is changing, us is smiles like nothing was wrong. The cousin sounds perplexed when she speaks up. You guys really are tight, aren't you? Makes me jealous. Well, we did spend a whole lot of time together last year because of that case. Sure, I was surprised to hear such weird stuff coming from him, but I know he'd never say any of that to me. Wait a sec. Who are you? Oh, oh I forgot to about that. I quickly introduced his cousin and tell Kihei that he may be a victim of the dream case. But Kihei looked again at his own and kicked his way. Huh? The student council president? You mean ours? That doesn't seem right. I remember the new president being a guy. What are you saying? I'm the student council president. Who else would I be? Mm, I'm pretty sure, though. Maybe if you told me your name, I'd remember. My name... Miss President stops moving. What's going on? She can't tell us her name? That's not that uh, strange, a, strange a question, is it? But for some reason, Miss President seems unable to answer. I sense some kind of incorporated Macaulay from her. She and I share a tense... Place. I... My name's... What's wrong? My... Memories... No! I don't want to fight anymore! Why do we have to kill one another? Huh? Kill one another? I gasped when I heard hear the words fall from her mouth. I don't know what's crossing her mind right now, but she's definitely not acting normally. I glanced at Chie, then tried to approach Miss President in the hopes of calming her down. Ah! Whoa! Oh! What's that? Help? Without warning, Miss President begins filling her arms as if she's trying to ward off demons. Her only, only she can see. Chie reaches out to touch his her in the corner. Miss President's arms catch Chie and easily knocks her aside. Chie! Hey! What power! I barely managed to catch Chie before she slams into the concrete wall. Still, this sudden breakdown, what in the world happened to Miss President? Once I have helped Chie back on her, to her feet, we carefully approach her from both sides. This will be a little rough, but it can be helped. We can't ask her anything while she's like this. But at that moment... What? No way! Before I know it, the president is flying through the air. She was jumping. For a moment, I can't not comprehend what I'm seeing. This is no ordinary heat. She was at the exam still, but now her entire body is suddenly up higher than my head. Her jumping ability is unbelievable. She and I look up as a segment as this president takes off the ceiling to change direction and then at a full run. Wow. Who is that girl? Did I say something to offend her? She did mention something about her memories. Mm, Come to think of it, wrong. her memories did seem a little muddled. Maybe she was on the verge of getting them back. Memory would make her go nuts and run away like that. I can't answer she at all. What if you had to teach? I hear Miss President's sad voice in my head. She apparently wasn't expecting me to answer her. And she I'll wait away. here. Make sure you rescue her, okay? <laughs> her voice is strong and strong. She drives the point home. Both she pokes my chest with her finger. Even though she might be in danger herself, she's still worrying about her uh, about others. All my friends are like that. That makes me really happy right now. I asked 
appreciate if you'll be alright on her own. As far as that, let me worry about that. I nodded to her and began running after Miss President once more. I will save her, no matter what. Is she sick? Hope not. Even though I was running as fast as I could, the invisible wall keeps preventing me from making too much, too much headway. I expected to strike the wall with my persona, but nothing happened. So many invisible walls, one after another. This president can pass through them. I don't know if I can keep up the pursuit. There, the announcement room is still my destination. There's no way to know if that's where the president is headed, headed as well. But if there's a shell waiting for me there, I'll need to get there anyway. Heidi and Reese should be in the announcement room. If I, if, you, and if Nanako is being held captive, that's where she should be as well. I have to keep running, but yet another wall blocks the hallway. At first, I think that this is a dead end. I realize that I can cut through a classroom and come out on the other side of the wall. It's forcing me to enter the room rather than letting me go straight. This probably means I braced myself and put my hand on the table. It's a classroom. The moment I step inside, a familiar voice echoes in my mind. Hi. Hi. Senpai. Senpai! Can you hear me? Please answer me! The real Risei! That voice? Is that you, Risei? The real one? The voice isn't coming from the PA system. That I'm actually hearing it in my head. Her ability. This has to be the work of Risei's persona. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I've been all I've been alone been since that since weird that fake Teddy, Teddy captured, captured me. me. And then you and were all fighting, fighting each other. other. Risei. I can hear the relief in her voice. She sounds so different from the intense and rude voice that had been coming from the PA system. This is indeed the Risei I know. Where are you now, Risei? Can you locate where I am? I'm sorry, I don't think there's time. I'm stuck in the announcement room. The same Please, room Senpai, ever. you have to hurry. If you don't, he'll... Uh-oh. Risei! What's wrong, Risei? There is no answer. The communication has been cut off. Has something happened to the announcement room? My heart begins racing. The enemy made us fight each other as a participant in this tournament. But they had to capture Risa as well. It's clear to me that they must have been worried about her using her persona's powers to tell us the truth. But that's not important right now. If she was just captured and prevent her from contacting us, then the enemy must think of Risa as being, being less reliable than those who had to fight. She sounded okay, but who knows what has, might happen to her now. I have to hurry. Pardon me for interrupting while you are lost in thought. <coughs> my hand brushes my shoulders and surprise I jump away and draw my sword. I can't believe that I let myself get so lost in thought that I didn't notice someone until they touched me. This is the second time I, I let myself get so distracted. I got used to having my friends with me while we investigated last year. I can't pay attention to the entire world on my own. I need to brace myself. Agit! I look up and see another familiar face. A girl with a blonde hair and freaking blue eyes. Wait. A girl? Her face and voice seem like human-like, but the rest of the body, there is metal everywhere all over her body. For a moment, I wonder if this is just an operating costume, but I cannot see the entire framework of her body where her joints connect. I didn't mean to startle you. You're... um... It's nice to meet you. My name is Igis. And no, I am not human. You are the one from the introduction video. Listed as the Sister Complex Kingpin of Steel, Narukami-san, correct? Well, she got the name right. I don't know what I'm thinking. The question caps me off guard. I wasn't expecting complete strangers to call me that. And did she just say she wasn't human? It's, well, when Skillski called me by the stupid title, I knew it was a joke. But when a stranger says it, it sounds like they truly believe it. <laughs> This is a, this is a <sighs> Nanako is important to me, but calling it a complex is stretching things. 
no, wait a second. I was trying to play it off, but I ended up blurting out Nanako's name anyway. Calm down, I need to take this conversation away from this subject. I clear my throat and try to start off. Aigasan, was it? Why are you here? Our primary objective is the destruction of shadows, but we have come to this world on a different mission. The destruction of shadows? Fight shadows, but how can we do that? And does that mean? Yes, I have a persona as well. Though my body is a machine, personas are the strength of the heart, after all. Just as I thought. I'm surprised to find out another persona is outside of my group of friends. And robot on top of that. I cannot come to grips with all of this. From the way we were talking, she seems just like a normal person only makes interesting suits. True, I have this empty story on the news about robots looking uncanny like real humans. Isn't something like this far beyond ghosts? Still, I can't help but believe the evidence of my of my own eyes. I've been hopping in and out of the TV for the past year. Who am I to say what's strange or not? Perhaps the technology behind the creation has supernatural moves on its own. I find myself growing more and more interested in how he came to be here. But have I have to put that aside for now. There's no, there's something I need to find out from her first. The P1 Grand Prix is so similar to the events of last year, but to think that this would involve someone like her, I don't, I don't have to clear a picture of everything that's happening, that's for sure. I call myself, then ask her what I feel would tell me what she's doing as well. And what is this mission of yours? As if you didn't know, you're the one who lured us both here. Oh my, did you figure it out? I didn't have a choice after those guys decided on their own to horn in on the fun. You're a bright boy, Sensei. You know what's coming next, don't you? I can't figure out what his motives are, but he's using us to trust each other. In other words, he's the next challenge that being set against me. Agathon seems to understand this as well, and is start staring at the monitor with a quiet on the audience. Sorry about this. Do you know the rule of this tournament? Only the victor of each match may move on. Yes? I have nothing against you but I'm in a hurry for my own reasons. Neither of us, in other words, can back down. Then there should be no hard feelings. That will not do. We will speak more of this after one of us wins. For the moment, I'm just 
my house to have known what I was thinking about. Thinking, but I really sat to right. What good would it do for us to pop things over? Dude, we really cannot leave this room, but until we have the battle, neither one of us is going anywhere. It does really matter if the team comes to an understanding or not. Until we have a fight, none of our goals are going to be accomplished. It, if that's the case, then it's better if we don't hear about each other's problems before we fight. That's crazy why Alistair has to hold me. It must be a version of kindness. It's finally ready my sword. Alistair appears to smile slightly when I do it. Right. I'm not going to give up on what I'm fighting for either. I need not to tell my friends to be safe. And I have to make sure that his presence is okay. I will use everything I can to protect them. To make her, for her comfort, condition, I make it a point to announce that I'm ready to start a fight. And here fight. goes. There's no need to hold back. Indeed. Let us do battle. Nice play factor between two roles in this game. Nice. Alright. You versus August. So I'll do this battle real quick, and then I'll get to the next scene next episode. Promise. And our persona is... I think that's so cool. Let's go! Final! Fight! Please hit! Okay, I don't know the score. Severe infantry damage! Or I kind of got it. Shadow's gone, but it's how long? All right, you has won against. Ah, uh, yes. Well done. All right, we'll stop from here until next time. We have Persona Five fans out there, and Persona Four Arena Ultimax with Arena in between. I'm glad I got this game today. <laughs> okay, we'll get more to the story with him later. I promise. Bye bye for now.